Hello, good morning. Uh, welcome to our morning worship on the Sunday after Ascension Day, 29th of May. This service is brought to you by St. Thomas of Beckett Church, Ramsey. My name is Ian Osborne. I'm the rector of the church. Ascension Day, which was last Thursday, uh, is a day when we consider Jesus is returning to his rightful place, having com completed his mission uh, of salvation to creation. Jesus uh, is enthroned on the right hand of the Father. It's a day when we think about the authority of Jesus uh, and also what that means for the authority that we, the church, have in order to complete the task that Jesus has given us. We we'll begin with an opening prayer. Please respond with the words in bold. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. As your spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And we'll sing our opening hymn at the name of Jesus. say a prayer of confession to God. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit, the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And our Bible reading now, reading from the very end of Luke's Gospel, 
which of course is only the beginning for Luke, of part one. Part two of Luke's writings are the Acts of the Apostles, which tell what happened afterwards. First, let's read from Luke 24. Then Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he proclaimed from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to God, but to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing. God. Jesus, you see, is the fulfillment of the expectation of Israel. Everything written in the scriptures about him, about the coming Messiah, about the kingdom of God that will be fulfilled, uh, which the, the, the nation of Israel, even at its height, when it was ruling its own self under King David, was merely a shadow of what was to come. All this is about Jesus. And it is in Jesus' name that re repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to all the nations. The vision that all the world will be reconciled to God is through Jesus. This is the authority statement of Jesus. His authority doesn't come from himself, but is given to him by the Father, from whom flow all, flows all authority. And as God's uh, chosen servant, God's agent, Jesus has accomplished his, his mission and uh, he withdraws from the disciples, as it, it, it's put here, and is carried up to heaven. Heaven, of course, isn't a place that happens just outside the solar system or something like that. Heaven is the state of being with the Father, um, the state outside of creation, passing from, from time and limitation into eternity. So Jesus has completed his mission and returns uh, to his um, his place beside the Father. In a sense, Jesus is returning to the place that he has always fulfilled in the great scheme uh, of God's relationship to creation. At the beginning of John's gospel, Jesus is described as the word. Um, and the word uh, for in Greek philosophy uh, meant the rational principle, the organizing principle. The principle which means that creation is an orderly place rather than utter chaos. And uh, it's that role also is the nature of the authority that Jesus exercises um, on his throne at the right hand of the Father. So Jesus is king. Not king like kings of the earth. We have seen the nature of Jesus's rule and sovereignty through Jesus's life. It's about self-sacrifice. It's about love. It's about calling us to, you, uh, to intimacy with God. But King, nonetheless, this is the nature of the rule of God, which is to apply in the kingdom of, uh, of God. And that kingdom has begun, has been inaugurated in Jesus's ministry on earth and Although there some rebellion against that rule continues, it will come to an end. There will come a time when the kingdom is fully asserted and Jesus' rule will be all in all. Where does that leave you and me? 
Well, I guess it depends where we stand relative to Jesus. Uh, it may well be that some of you listening to me are interested, else you wouldn't be listening in Jesus, but haven't decided to accept that he is your saviour. Uh, in that case, then uh, you are amongst the nations to whom repentance and forgiveness of sins is being proclaimed. But for those of us who have accepted that, who have been baptised, who are members of the church, then what this uh, event that Jesus ascending into heaven uh, in, inaugurates is a new kind of relationship with God. Somebody, I read recently, somebody said, ascension is when Christianity turns mystic. Uh, what that is to say, mystic, is to say that um, the union of each of our individual souls with Christ uh, is inaugurated at ascension time. As long as Jesus was present in the body on earth, then he was one person and we are another. There is a kind of divide between human beings in the flesh. However much we understand or love each other, there is a mystery about another person and what is going on inside of them. As Jesus ascends to heaven and next Sunday, we will celebrate Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes, who brings Jesus to live inside our hearts. From then on, at a very deep level, what is available to us is mystic union with Christ. It doesn't happen like that. It's the result of a lifetime of spiritual development. But that is the promise to know God deeply. And therefore, the authority of Jesus is also the authority of the church. Because the church is in mystic union with Christ um, in the same way as a bridegroom and bride are uni united. It's another image uh, of the relationship between Jesus and the church. In this same way, therefore, the authority of Jesus is ours, just as the task of Jesus is ours. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the feet and legs, the hands, the voice, the eyes with which Jesus works in the world. And that's what we see in this reading, that Jesus is giving a task to the disciples, witness and proclaim. In uh, St. Matthew's uh, version of this story, it's expressed even more clearly. We are to uh, proclaim the gospel. We are to uh, make disciples, baptize them, uh, and teach them. And just as we have a task to perform, so we also have the authority that we need to perform this task. The church speaks on behalf of God. And that is awe inspiring. Those of us who are uh, commissioned or ordained uh, to uh, speak on behalf of the church, it is uh, a terrifying prospect sometimes but when one uh, proclaims the forgiveness of sins we're speaking on behalf of God because that's the authority that Jesus has given to the church but we mustn't wimp out we mustn't uh, fail to fulfill this task we must do it in all humility because we also know that even though we have been given this task and the authority to pursue it still we are very weak and fallible the church fails all the time sometimes we speak nonsense sometimes we fail to live up to our task but that also we mustn't allow it to distract us from witnessing and proclaiming it changes the way we do it we are uh, we must be humble witnesses to jesus not pointing to ourselves but pointing to our king but nevertheless we must proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in Jesus's name to all nations. Let us now turn to God in prayer. I'm going to say intercessions at the end of each short petition, I will say, Lord, come to bless us. Please respond and fill us with your spirit. And at the end, we'll say the words in love.
Let us pray. We pray for God to fill us with his spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit given us by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Generous God, you, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your spirit. We say together, hear our prayer. Make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Sing now our second hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. <laughs> Thank you. 
as we draw towards the end of this service, I just wanted to share with you a short uh, passage from the writings of a, a 13th century mystic called uh, Meister Eckhart, um, a Dominican. Um, I was speaking about how Jesus's uh, ascension and the gift of the Holy Spirit enable our mystic union with Jesus. Uh, Eckhart um, thought about that as the birth of the word of God in one's soul. And he wrote this. Why do we pray? Why do we fast? Why do we do all our works? Why are we baptized? Why, most important of all, did God become man? I would answer, in order that God may be born in the soul and the soul be born in God. For that reason, all the scriptures were written. For that reason, God created the world and all angelic natures. And so I wish you that you may go forward into your week as, uh, as a little child born within God and that the word of God may be born as a little child within you, within your soul. Let's end with this blessing. Huh? We say the words in bold. May the spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a good week.